Welcome back, family. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Tiara, and on this channel, we're pretty much still just figuring it out because we know life be life in, and so we talk about almost any and everything. But today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, and that is books. If you did not know, Target this week had a Target Circle deal for buy two, get one free on books. And I took full advantage of that, and I have a little book haul here that I want to share with you. As of shooting this video, today is the last day to take advantage of this deal. So I'm trying, I'm gonna try to post this video today. So if you're watching it as it's posted, I highly recommend that you run to your nearest Target if you are interested in taking advantage of this deal because you can get some good books and we're gonna talk about them today. So the first one was the first one I actually saw when I was walking through the book section and it was kind of set up a little different than I'm used to so I end up walking past a section that I usually you know don't spend too much time in um, kind of like the personal development area but it was also like poetry and like feel-good type books if that makes sense and that book is watering the soul this is by author Courtney Peppernell um, this author also had a number of other books that looked similar to this with like a similar design and as I was thumbing through those, they kind of have kind of the same feel to them. Um, so I'm going to read you a little bit of the synopsis on the back to kind of get you to understand what this is about. So it says, in the deepest, most enchanting part of the forest, a creature hands you a seed. Within the seed is your soul ready to be grown again. The book is divided into sections, this time guiding you through a step-by-step -step recipe to heal your soul, filled with themes that focus on forgiveness, gratitude, togetherness, and equality. Pepernell takes you on a journey to cultivate the precious yet, yet profound understanding that just as a seed does not grow with haste, neither is the path to becoming whole short, that in each and every step we find the meaning of watering the soul. This is the story of your soul and how it can be grown again. So as I was looking at this, it looks like it's a number of like short um poems or you know short stories if you will this looks like something i'd be really interested in kind of you know picking up in the morning i like to read early in the morning when i can but when i do i don't want to dive into anything that's going to be too heavy for me so like i'll try to read something that's you know light or it's going to inspire me to kind of get going with my day and this sounded like something i'd be interested in now the other books by this author that i saw that i did not pick up were more focused on you know kind of the same type of setup but the themes were related to like loss or breakup or grief and i knew right now in this season of my life that that's not something i really needed um but i kept that in the back of my mind because i'm sure as life continues on you know things change things happen this is going to be an author, if I enjoy this, of course, this is going to be an author that I want to go back and revisit those themes um, as my life goes on. So I thought this would be an interesting one to pick up. Um, again, probably going to be something that I read first thing in the morning. Um, it looks like something I could just, you know, kind of start and just read a few poems at a time. I don't think this is anything that I'm going to be focused on trying to get done within a certain amount of time. Like it's not like a you know, a monthly TBR goal or anything. I think this is going to be more of like an ongoing read for me. You know, a slow read, if you will. So that's the first one I got. And then the next one I got, I'm really excited to dive into. So I've heard mixed reviews on this. And the reviews that I've heard have not really had anything to do with the plot of this story or even the story itself. I, I have no idea whatsoever what this book is about. I'm going into it 100% blind, so I'm not even going to read the synopsis here because I want to go into it blind, but it's a horror novel, and I have yet to read a good horror book, um, and it's Hidden Pictures by Jason Recolet. Recolet. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. So anytime that I heard about a review for this book, I made sure I did not, you know, look at anything that had to do with spoilers, of course, because I hate, obviously, nobody wants to know what going to happen in the book before they read it right um so i didn't you know watch any spoiler type of you know reviews on this or read any spoiler views reviews um mainly it was about people's impressions of the book and a lot of what i'm hearing is kind of mixed so a lot of people really like this book some people gave it five stars some people gave it two stars and the ones that were giving it two stars 
were saying it had more to do with the overall message at the end of the book when it comes together that they did not really vibe with but while they were reading it it was like a thrill like it kept them on the edge of their seat so i'm going to see what my impression is of this again i'm not going to read the synopsis because i do want to go into it blind um but i am going to give this a try this is again a horror book so we're going to see how that goes because i have not really had the opportunity to read a horror and so I don't know how it's going to sit with me. I love horror movies, but I don't know how that translates into like reading a book. And with this book, there are pictures throughout it. I kind of just skimmed through um, because I don't have a context for the book. I don't really have a context for the pictures, but I've heard that as you're reading the book, the pictures kind of provide like that jump scare that lends itself to being that horror that you're looking for. So really excited to get into that one i honestly might start that one tonight um just because i'm really anticipating what that's gonna be about so the next book is actually the first book in a series it's a fantasy and it was recommended to me by my girl blossom i'm gonna tag her here so you guys can go ahead and follow her she has great content great recommendations on books um and she told me that this series was really good i was very hesitant to get into it because i have a thing about getting into series when I know that it's gonna require me to, first of all, purchase a number of books all together, I'm a little hesitant, right? Because if I don't know if I'm gonna like the series, I would hate to buy, you know, five, six, eight books within the series. And after I read the first one, I absolutely hate it. So what I decided to do because Target was having this sale and I saw that this book, the first book of the series was available, I said, you know what, let me grab it. And then if I like it, then we can go ahead and get the rest of them. And that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Pretty sure you've heard about this all over TikTok, all over social media. I literally have no context whatsoever for this book. I know nothing, nothing at all. I don't want to go into it too blind because I feel like I need to have some kind of context because when it comes to fantasies, when it comes to fantasies, there's really a lot of world building that happens in the beginning of the book, you know, obviously, so that you kind of understand, you know, where you are when you're reading this book and when it's set in places that are completely like abstract to us i know that that takes some time for me to kind of get into right so for example like game of thrones i watched that show before i got into reading the book and quite honestly if i would have read the book first i probably would have been a little bit lost because i wouldn't have had you know any visual context for what's going on um but any other time i've gotten into fantasies it hasn't been too hard but i've the fantasies i've been reading are have been usually like ya fantasies like young adult fantasies so they've been a little bit easier to get into so i'm going to see what this is about um if you don't know anything about a court of thorns and roses or this series here akatar series as they call it i'm going to read the synopsis really quick for you and for me so it says when 19 year old huntress fairy 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 not even gonna try to struggle with that. We're just gonna, we're just gonna call her fairy for now. Uh, kills a wolf in the woods. A terrifying creature arrives to demand retribution. Dragged to a treacherous magical land she knows only about from legends, fairy discovers that her captor is not truly a beast, but one of the lethal immortal fairies who once ruled her world. At least he's not a beast all the time. As she adapts to her new home, her feelings for the fairy, fairy Tamlin transform in from icy hostility into a fiery passion that burns through every lie she's been told about the beautiful dangerous world of the fae but something is not right in the fairy lands an ancient wicked shadow is growing and fae ray must find a way to stop it or doom tamlin and his world forever mm. sounds spicy so we'll see how this one goes again not much context outside of that synopsis so i'm excited to get into that i really love going into books blind um especially when i get so many good reviews about them because then you know i i i'm excited to read it without really knowing why i should be excited to read it you know um and and the mystery of what's going to happen is i don't know it makes it all the better so the limited knowledge i have of this is just enough for me to get into that i don't know if i'm going to start that this month simply because i'm already 
getting into Game of Thrones and I'm still getting into Harry Potter. And so that's a lot for me to go through. And I also have uh, Fourth Wing on my TBR. I, I read the first chapter. I don't know when I'm going to get into I have a lot of fantasies on my TBR, both in my like Goodreads and my physical TBR. So I need to kind of organize what I'm going to read when. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot to, you know, dig through. So we'll see when we decide to read that one. As many of you know, I love thrillers. I love, you know, mysteries, you know, the page turners, the ones that have those plot twists that make me wonder what's going to happen next. Love it all. So this is another one I heard that was really good and it's been on my TBR for a little while and it's called The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Um, this one, I kind of had an idea what it was about before because I had heard so much talk about it. So I'm going to read the synopsis for you. Casey Fletcher, a recently widowed actress trying to escape a streak of bad press, has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont. Armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles, bottles of bourbon, she passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple living in the house across the lake. They make for a good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom, is powerful, and a former model, Catherine, is gorgeous. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning and the two strike up a budding friendship. But the more they get to know each other and the longer Casey watches, it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects, suspects, <laughs> Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye and that shocking secrets can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. Yeah, this one, sounds good i'm excited to read this one as well i have not really flipped through this one but i did note that there were like some darker pages so i'm wondering if there's pictures in here or if those are just how they separate the uh <laughs> the different scenes and things but i'm really excited to dive into this one this one is also um a bit of a shorter read compared to my other books so we'll see about that one that one I probably will pick up when, whenever, whenever I feel the mood to read it. Okay, now this next one's pretty massive. Okay, it's it's a thick it's a thick one, and on top of that, I've heard that this book like there's really no avoiding being sad when you read this book. So I told myself when I'm in a really good mood, I'm gonna read this. Um, and also I've been told that perspective wise, because a lot of the books I've noticed lately when you read them, you know, the chapter will start and you kind of either are told whose perspective you're reading from, or it will like actually say like at the top of the chapter, like this is the person's perspective you're reading at, you know, or the dialogue will give it away. But this one I'm told as you're reading it, you stop getting those hints and those clues and you kind of have to base your understanding of what's going on from what happened earlier in the book so people have been like annotating this book like crazy so this is a little life by i'm probably gonna butcher this name so please forgive me hania yanagi yanagahara we're just gonna call the author by their last name because it's probably easier for me strangely enough with the long last name yanagahara a little life um i've heard that this book is just super depressing um, so I'm definitely going to be reading this when I'm in a better mood. So I'm going to read the synopsis for both you and I. It says, a little life follows four college classmates, broke, adrift, and bullied only by their friendship and ambition as they move to New York in search of fame and fortune. While their relationships, which are tinged by addiction, success, and pride, deepen over the decades, the men are held together by their devotion to the brilliant, enigmatic Jude, a man scarred by an unspeakable childhood trauma. A hymn to brotherly bonds and a masterful depiction of love in the 21st century, Hanaya, Hania Yanagihara's, I think I got it that time, stunning novel is about the families we are born into and those that we make for ourselves. I'm excited to read this one. Not excited to read it right now. Again, this thing is about 800 plus pages. It's a big girl. Um, so again, when I'm in a really, really good mood and I need to come down, We'll give this one, we'll give this one a, a read. Um, and the last book, which I am really excited about reading, is by an author that I've been hearing a lot about, but I have yet to read any of her writings. 
um, and that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. Now, I've been told that this author has other books that are really, you know, good to start with, like the Poppy War Trilogy, I believe it is. Yes, the Poppy War Trilogy. They did not have those books available at Target, so I decided that what I'm going to do is go to like Barnes & Noble or find another bookstore that maybe has those books and get those before I dive into this one. But I wanted to get this book and put it in my physical TBR because this book was like 30 something dollars at Barnes & Noble. So when I saw it at Target for the buy two get one free, obviously I had to grab it because I'm getting a deal. So I'm gonna read the synopsis of this one. I had a little more context for this one. So, you know. 1828, Robin Swift, orphaned by cholera in Canton, is brought to London by the mysterious Professor Lovell. There, Robin trains for years in Latin, ancient Greek, and Chinese, all in preparation for the day he'll enroll in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. The tower and its students are the world's center for translation and more importantly, magic. Silver working, the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation using enchanted silver bars, has made the British unparalleled in power as the arcane craft serves the empire's quest for colonization. For Robin, Oxford is a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, but knowledge obeys power. And as a Chinese boy raised in Britain, he realizes serving Babel means betraying his motherland. As his studies progress, Robin finds himself caught between Babel and the shadowy Hermes Society, an organization dedicated to stopping imperial expansion. When Britain pursues an unjust war with China over silver and opium, Robin must decide. Can powerful institutions be changed from within, or does revolution always require violence? This one sounds so good. I'm excited to read this one as well. Um, so that's pretty much it for the haul. Again, I'm going to try to post this the day that I recorded it. So if you're watching it the same day, I highly recommend you run to your local Target because, girl, these were all there. And they had so many other titles that were available as well. Um, I just, I knew it'd be a little ridiculous for me to come home with like 20, 30 books. Also, my wallet would have thought it was pretty ridiculous to come home with 30, 20, 30 books. So I didn't do that. So I grabbed the books that were already on my TBR. I grabbed the books that were interesting to me as soon as I got there. And this is what we came home with. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, see you later.